Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so a couple people asked me if I could give them introductions to Shader Toy, so I thought I'd make this video and kind of help solve that problem. I think a lot of people could benefit from this. So this is my first YouTube video, and I usually do blog posts, so wish me luck here. And this is largely unrehearsed, which I'm sure is a mistake, but uh, let's go for it. Okay, so... Um, First off, uh, Shader Toy is is uh, a super fun community full of extremely talented graphics people, uh, and also uh, people learning, people experience, just the whole the whole gamut. It's a great place to learn and hone your skills, and like I've learned so much here from uh, from everyone that I don't I don't know where I would be in graphics without them. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, there's a lot of demo scene people on here. A lot of movie people, uh, game developers, all sorts. So real quick, I want to show you a couple shader toys that are pretty impressive. Uh, so first up is uh, this snail from uh, Inigo Quiles. Super hyper-realistic and all this stuff. And once we actually go through how shader toy works, it'll be a lot more, uh, a lot more impressive. And then over here, we have um, a playable... Uh, Yep. Turn off the sound. Playable Doom game with sound by Paul Mullen. And yeah, it's crazy. You can run around. I'm running around right now. Just got shot. Gonna go up there. Kill these these Doom guys. Take their stuff. And yeah, fully playable. It's just it's just insane. Um, you can also do path tracing. Like here's a shader toy I made just the other day to uh, to go along with a blog a blog post on path tracing. Uh, as you heard in Doom, there, that you can actually do audio as well. And so here's a fun one from uh, Anigo Aquiles. And I'll make sure to put links to all these these guys in uh, in the comments. And yeah, you can do fun stuff like this too, like random note slides. This is a, a shader toy of mine. And uh, that's actually a lot more mathy than you would expect because um, this shader toy is completely stateless, meaning uh, it asks, hey, what sample 1,358? And you have to give it right there without um, any discontinuities with previous samples or anything like that. Audio programming statelessly is a lot of fun, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, shader toy is only pixel shader. There's no vertex shaders, no meshes, and so it can be a challenge to render anything. And in 2D, a common way is to do 2D side, uh, sign distance fields, like in this uh, 2D Verlay physics stunt car game I made. Oh, rewind it a little bit. So yeah, I made this game. Woo. You can flip. And so yeah, this is all made with, uh, basically with sign distance fields, which we'll learn a little bit about today. And then uh, for 3D, um, people usually do ray tracing or ray marching or sphere tracing, and basically uh, ray marching, or, or also known as sphere tracing when you do it slightly different. It lets you ray trace more interesting shapes, like this uh, cubic Lagrange rectangle, and this is one of mine. So basically the control points are moving up and down uh, randomly, or pseudo-randomly, and it's showing the surface. Now you, you could, there's no way that you could do analytically solve a ray for the, where this where the ray hits this shape. And so it uses ray marching where it walks down the ray and it, uh, it's, it basically finds the place where the ray goes from being on top of the surface to being underneath it. And then that's where the intersection is. So yeah, you have to get pretty creative when you're working in shader toy. Um, yeah, and so like I said, it's just, just a full screen pi pixel shader. Um, the inputs to the pixel shader are basically just the pixel location. Um, you can read some input. Um, and it's stateless by default, but you can add some multi-pass buffers and make it have some state from frame to frame. And yeah, like I showed, you can also do audio synthesis. So yeah, now that the introduction's out of the way, let's let's do some shader toying. So uh, assuming that you, you create an account, I'll log out and show you how to do that. So basically, 
you would go to uh, sign in. Just give it a second. It's got a couple of shaders. And you would go over here to create account and you'd sign up. Um, then once you do that, you could come back and just sign in. You've got to wait for the shaders to compile again. I'm on Firefox and it seems to want to recompile them every time for some reason. Okay, so we're going to do new shader and this is what you get by default. It's just uh, an animating noise gradient across the screen. Um, there's some controls here at the bottom. It shows you the time, frames per second, resolution. You can record, you can go to VR, turn on and off sound, go full screen. You can also pause it and rewind time. So when you first have a shader, uh, you need to give it a name, some tags, and a description. So we can call this, uh, call it Shader Toy Tutorial Demo Fox. And for tags, maybe tutorial. Describing the shader, uh, just a tutorial. And over here you can say uh, what visibility you want it as. Private means only you can see it. Unlisted means you can give other people the link, but if people search for it, they don't see it. And public and public API, I always go public API. Don't really know the difference. But yeah, so once you have these fields filled out, you can hit submit. And here we go, our shader is uh, saved and we're ready to start. Something interesting is that the, the shader toy name actually needs to be globally unique. So gotta consider that when you, when you are naming your shader toy. Okay, so first up, um, we can see our, our main image function. And it says it takes, uh, it takes in a frag chord and gives out a frag color. Now the frag chord is the integer uh, value of the pixel. And there are some shader inputs, and you can see it right here. If you click here, it'll show you uh, what's available. Um, so like the resolution, time, the, the frame delta, frame number, blah, 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 blah. And actually over here in the lower right where the question mark is, you can click that, and it'll show you some more stuff. I'll let you look at that on your own. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, what, we're going to try to draw some circles is the ultimate goal. But, um, and we'll see how that goes. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't rehearsed this. So let's just start out. Um, what we're going to start out with is we're going to show the percentage of uh, <clears throat> the pixel divided by the resolution on the X and Y axis. So let's let's try that. Um, actually, we, we have that line right here, but uh, we'll do it again. So we'll go do percent equals, copy that. Uh, the frag chord, which is the XY component uh, resolution. No, no, no. The frag chord uh, XY is just the, the location of the pixel. And we're going to divide it by the resolution. So we have our percent. It was super easy. And then for the color, we're going to make it be percent in the red and green. And we're going to make it uh, nothing in blue. And alpha is going to be solid. So... And we can save it, click in the Save button, and it'll show blue over here when it's saved. Yep. Okay, so as we can see in our image, the lower left is black. And then as we move to the right, it turns red. And as we go up, it turns green. So what that's telling us is that the x-axis goes positively to the right, and the y-axis goes positively up, and the, uh, the origin is over here in the lower left. Okay, so next up... Um, we're going to make a circle by uh, getting the distance from the current pixel to the center of the screen. Um, and then uh, if it's greater than a radius, we're going to make it one color, else we're going to make it another color. So let's do that. So we'll go float distance equals, oh, that's a reserved word. So we'll go dist equals uh, length percent minus vec2, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because that's the center of the screen. And then we're going to say, uh, let's do this, if disk less than 0 0.1, we're going to say the frag color, make it uh, black. So um, else 
if it's greater than or equal, we're going to make it white. And yeah, uh, this thing is making a vex4. And we can kill that. Okay, so let's see now. We did it. Okay, now the the fun thing is is that it's not actually it's a circle it's a it's an ellipse um, so what we are going to do is we're going to um, have to account for the difference in the width divided by the height um, so we're going to go uh, okay so we're going to calculate the aspect ratio and then we're going to say uh, percent dot x times equals aspect ratio. Let's see. Got that wrong. Okay, so. Yeah, but that's not quite what we want. So let's try this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's, let's make the center of our screen be uh, 0, 0 instead of 0 0.5. So we're going to do percent minus equals vec2. Uh, 0.5 on each axis. Okay, let's see now. Okay. And we're going to make this be the distance from the origin. Okay, so we're back to our ellipse. Okay, and what is it? Let's see. Aspect ratio. No. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's clean that up a little bit. Add some comments. Okay. And so, yeah, we're looking pretty good for our circle, right? Oh, um, we're going to do a little bit better, though, so let's do this. Uh, so we're going to subtract out the radius. So really, this distance, it's going to be the distance from the circle. Uh, and it's actually going to be a sine distance, um, but we don't care about that right now. So let's see that. Yep, everything's looking good, so we can save. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Next up, so we have a circle. We made it correct for the aspect ratio. Um, next up, we want to anti-alias the edges a little bit. Um, now, so there are, there's like mathematically correct ways to do this. And then there's just kind of like the fudging way. We're going to do the fudging way. We're going to use smooth step and the, we're going to smooth step the distance. And this has a nice benefit that you can also uh, make it intentionally smooth if, if you just wanted to do that. Um, and I'll, you'll see that in a second, but I always forget the, uh, the parameters for a smooth step. So let's see how this goes. I think it's, um, this way. Nope, I think I got it backwards. Hmm. This basically is graphics programming right here. Just keep flipping the arguments till it does the thing that you know it should do. So that isn't right. Let's check it out. Okay, smooth step, GLSL. Okay, edge 0, edge 1, and X. So that should have been working. So, let's do this. Oh, right, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, and we have to change how we output our final color a little bit because we were checking for it to be negative before, but it's it's not going to be negative. Okay, so what we this is what we should do. We should do say float shade equals this smooth step, and then we're going to use that shade in the final color. Ah. Let's check it out. Cool, perfect. Okay, uh, so then we can do 
you can see how it's super smooth. And if, if we uh, bring the smooth step values in a little bit, it'll kind of clear up. So you can use uh, pixel derivatives or uh, some other math to make it to where the smoothness is just perfect for the resolution uh, for doing anti-aliasing. Or you can just screw with it by hand, which, which I'm doing right now. Um, but so yeah, the nice thing is uh, you can see the circle is anti-aliased. We could easily put it back to being not by doing this. Shade equals just less than 0, 0.0 f. Um, oh, I got that backwards. So you can see it's all pixelated on the edges, but when we use uh, smooth step instead, it, it gets nice and soft. We'll comment this. Calculate uh, shade of circle based on distance. And, uh, and smooth it out for anti-aliasing. OK, so we save that. OK, so let's see. So next up, um, so we're using the distance of, of the pixel to the circle to calculate a shade. Now, something interesting is, is this is, in fact, a sine distance field, right? Um, inside of the circle, the distance is less than zero. Outside the circle, it's greater than zero. And so we are doing two-dimensional sine distance fields right now. And um, yeah, that's, that's nice because it's kind of like a um, like vector graphics. Sine distance fields give you uh, vector graphic uh, type rendering. So the next thing I wanted to show is that you can actually use modulus to um, to repeat uh, shapes, which is kind of cool. So let me do that real quick. Um, wait, let's see. Um, how did it go? GLSL mod. Okay, right. Okay, so it'll give me a remainder of those. Um, let's see. So our radius is that. I'm going to shift the circle over a little bit. So it's... Um, so... Basically, so we can do modulus and it'll tile. Um, and I'll show that in a sec. Okay, so let's try that. Cool, it moved over. Okay. Um, 0 0.1. Okay, so let's do this. Perfect. Okay. So let me take that out for a second. Okay. So what I did was um, here we're calculating the pixel as a percentage, but this line that I have commented out says um, take it modulo 0 0.3 as far as percentage goes. Um, and so what that does is it takes um, the percent region from 0 to 3, which is where, which contain the circle, um, and it, it repeated it infinitely. Um, now the cool thing is that doesn't take more computing power to draw more circles. It's the same as before. Everything is going through this branchless code, but now, you know, it's just, it's just drawing more circles, which is, which is pretty rad. Um, so that's the thing that you get both from um, 2D sign distance fields when you're rendering like this, but also 3D sign distance fields when you're doing ray marching, is that you can just take uh, the point in the ray you're testing, do modulus on it, and then that gives you infinitely repeating shapes, which is pretty rad. Um, now something else that's neat that you can do is you can do this. Let's, uh, you can actually figure out which circle that it's drawing for and kind of get an instance ID. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to do floor percent divided by 0 0.3f. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, instance ID. And this instance ID, it is, it's a vec2, so really you're getting the cell. Well, let's call it the cell. Instance cell. Uh, instance grid cell. So it's easier to understand what's going on. Make sure that compiles. Yep, everything's green. Oh, by the way, if you ever type something bad like uh, compile error, 
you hit the play button, it'll give you um, some errors. And uh, yeah, you can just fix them up, compiles, save, yep. Okay, so we have the instance cell. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to say, uh, we're actually going to use the instance cell to calculate a radius. Okay, so let's try that. So let's say uh, calculate radius, float radius equals, let's do, I don't know how this is going to look, so we'll do sine of the x uh, plus cosine of y. Eh. And so that's going to be from negative two to positive two. So we're going to we want to remap it to be a per, uh, from zero to one first. Okay, so we're going to say plus. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do plus two point zero, and that'll make it be from zero to four. We'll divide it by four, and then uh, call this radius percent. And then we're going to use that to that radius percent to go between a, a minimum and maximum radius using mix, which is just lerp. So uh, the smallest radius we want is, let's say it's 0 0.05, and the largest radius will be 0 0.12. And we'll, we'll use radius percent to lerp. And we'll take this radius, put it right here. Let's see how we do. Pretty cool. It's not. Um, They have changed, but they're not super diverse. So let's see. Uh, make it a little bit more random by multiplying it by large numbers. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, kind of. Uh, hopefully you get the idea. There's, um, there's a lot of shader toys that will show you how to do um, white noise random number generation in a shader. And uh, yeah, one way, ironically, is just to take the fract, uh, the fractional part of sine of a number times another large number. But yeah, we won't worry too much about that. Um, but something else that you can do is you can calculate a color using the, the cell. Um, yeah, OK. So we have a shade. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got this. Okay, so we'll make a color. Um, make a vec3 color equals, and what are we going to do? we got to use the, the cells, so we'll say uh, x percent, all oh, right. Let's see see how this works out. Um, so we have a color kind of made. We're going to see how it looks in a minute. But um, right now we're just using the shade to display it. So here's we're actually going to use a shade to blend from white to the color we want. Okay, so uh, shade zero is the color we want. So, okay, so color. And shade, okay, so let's see this. We should only have red. Oh, let's do mod. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, abs, because it can go negative on the left side. Um, let's multiply this by something. Um, okay, we got we have a color pattern of some kind. I'm doing this all just 
by the seat of my pants, so I don't have like some good formulas laid out. Um, one way that I do like to make colors procedurally is to use, uh, well rather, when I'm turning indexes into C's into color, as I will use um, the golden ratio and uh, use that to control the hue in an HSV color. Uh, and that's pretty cool because uh, neighboring indices will have colors that are mostly maximally different from each other. Okay, so and then for the Y, what if we just did the same thing? Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then uh, blue, I don't know, let's let's multiply them. Oh, I don't need both. Uh, but I can do this. See how that looks. No, nope. comma, okay. Cool, and then uh, let's see. Yeah, and this black one is always gonna be black because it's cell zero, and uh, so zero times anything is zero. Um, we could change that up by doing this. Ah, gotta make it a float. And yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a, a sense of some things you can do in Shader Toy. This is seriously just the beginning. Um, I mean, yeah, like ray tracing, ray marching, um, all sorts of games. You can make stateful things, audio synthesis. Shader Toy is pretty freaking amazing. And yeah, it's just, just pixel shaders, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'll put some links in, in the description, and I hope you enjoyed this video.